All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday, May 12th, also Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. Big special happy Mother's Day to my mom if you're watching this. Um, we got five MLB picks coming your way. We're still obviously on the road, on the go, so we're not going through each and every game like we normally do, but we will get back to that for tomorrow's video, so sit tight, guys. Uh, we will, but five picks coming your way today. A couple of them are related to one another, so maybe call it like three and a half picks, um, if that makes sense, but in terms of yesterday, uh, the Phillies lose one nothing in the in the top five or the um the, the first five so we end up losing that one i am in philly so it would have been nice to cash that that wow in here um then we had george springer over or under two and a half hits runs and rbis it's still pending in my mgm account because he did end up getting into the game got an at bat but walked so it's not a technical at bat it's a plate appearance though so i gotta read up on the rules there but either way that's either going to be a void or a cash. So I guess we can't complain about that. And then if you refer back to yesterday's video, we did sort of ladder the twins um, in in a sense, and we hit two of the four, but they were plus money plays. So not a terrible night, um, but not the best night. I'm not trying to brag about last uh, yesterday, um, but overall, didn't really kill us. But today we have five picks. Uh, we did have a little bit of a heater in the NBA video, but we'll talk about that once we get there. But uh, yeah, let's not waste any more time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Again, hopefully you guys appreciate uh, the video still, even when we're on the road, because they look and sound a hell of a lot different. I know there's a couple guppies in the comments yesterday being like, well, these are terrible videos. Why do them? I literally say all the time, I understand these videos are a little bit worse, but I'd rather get a video out and continue to, to, to grow this ship and, and rock with you guys than just say, hey, I'm traveling for a weekend, let me take the weekend off. It's how my brain works, it is what it is. But let's jump into these plays. Play number one is going to be, um, I'm splitting, these are probably going to be both core unit plays. We're still not ready we probably are because we are having a good MLB season to start, but still not ready to go and just start throwing full units on everything in the MLB. I still want like almost maybe two more weeks of data. Um, but nonetheless, Twins team total over four and a half. That's near even odds over on FD at minus 102. And then Twins first five team total over two and a half um, for plus 110 over on DraftKings. The reason I like this play is they are going up against Alec Manoa, who uh, has obviously just struggled overall. Um, to be honest, even last year, that was a terrible sort of situation from him uh, for him. And then he gets in this year, goes up against Washington, pitches four innings, six hits, seven runs come in, six of them earned. He did have six Ks, uh, I'll give him that, um, but four walks, two home runs. Like, it doesn't seem like the best spot for Manoa. And the, um, I almost said the Timberwolves, the Twins have been playing good baseball. Four of their last five games, they've hit over this line. They've had six plus in four of those five. And they've gone up against uh, some decent pitchers, right? Gosling. Kikichi, George Kirby, uh, Gilbert. Like, it's not like they're facing no names. And I'm not trying to say Manoa is a no name because at one point I actually thought I liked Manoa. And then last year, just kind of, I mean, it's like stay away from that guy at all costs. Uh, so, Twins team total over four and a half for the full game. And then first five innings over two and a half for plus 110. If you want to pay more juice and get it at over one and a half, sure. Um, I think we're just going to risk it to get to the biscuit a little bit more uh, in this spot. So, that's going to be play number one. And play number two, like I said, five technical picks coming your way, but it's more like three and a half because this is like like one pick in and of itself because I think if one cashes, we have a really good chance of cashing the other. Play number two in that same game. This is going to be a quarter unit play um, just because I like the matchup. Ryan Jeffers here over one and a half. I know the graphic doesn't say over. In fact, I could fix that for you real quick. Over one and a half total bases here for plus 130. Um, and I do like this spot. Again, more of a matchup against Alec Manoa. Uh, that plus 130 is on DraftKings ESPN bet. Caesars has it at like plus 128. So some good prices off out there in terms of the books you're looking at. But he's hit this in nine of his last 10 games, averaging 2.7 bases per game in that stretch on the season averaging 2.11 so uh, we do like to see that he's betting 290 overall uh, this season but against right-handed pitchers betting 295 uh, and that makes up nearly uh, half of or actually it's like 66 percent of his plate appearances so I do like to see that isolated power jumps about 40 points as well and his extra base hit percentage right now is 60 percent on the season which is good in and of itself great right 
61.5 against right-handed pitcher. So I do think that there's some opportunity here for him to do this in one swing. Um, but I also don't mind the idea of him having uh, multiple hits. So Ryan Jeffers over one and a half bases for plus 130. Again, we're a little bit less on the unit size there because it's a plus 130 play. We don't need to kind of risk it all uh, in this one, especially when I do think that these are correlated in a sense. If he has multiple bases, I think that that's going to help the Twins bring in runs, right? Play number three. And before we do get to that, guys, I did want to shout out Sleeper here. Um, they have a promo going on. Zach Wheeler, his strikeout line has been knocked down to five and a half. It was seven and a half. I have a link in the pinned comment if you do want to check out Sleeper. It's an amazing, amazing player prop app. You guys know I've been talking about it for a long time because I use it every single day myself. If you don't have a Sleeper account, sign up again with the link in the pinned comment. It's also in the description. The pinned comment is probably easier. You get 100% of your first deposit. It matched up to 500 bucks. If you wanted to be a psycho and throw in 500 bucks, they're going to be even more of a psycho and throw in 500 bucks. You'll have a new account balance of a thousand. But again, anything up to 500, they'll match as well. Go check it out. Get this square link in the pinned comment. Again, that is a hundred percent deposit match as well as this square. They also have a basketball square out right now. And Anthony Edwards uh, knocked down line and they're doing discounts on Wednesdays, on Sundays. Like they do so many discounts and they have more line offerings than most of the other DFS apps out there. And like I tell you guys all the time. Every single play on there has its own unique multiplier, so the payouts are dynamic based on what you throw in there. They don't just follow a fixed payout structure. Go check out Sleeper. You will not regret it. All right, play number three. We're looking at Seth Lugo, Kansas City Royal here, under two and a half earned runs. When it comes to this play, uh, I do just look at, uh, I, I guess you could say the game log for the Angels here. Um, they've only had a, a few pitchers, so I think it's like three of the last 11 right-handed pitchers that they've faced have gone over this line. Lugo's looked pretty good here. On the season, he's only gone over this in one game, and it was against the Baltimore Orioles. So if you were to tell me Baltimore versus a righty versus, you know, Angels versus a righty, I'm taking Baltimore all day long. And again, three earned runs isn't all that crazy. The one concern... I have here is that their bullpen is uh, is well I guess their bullpen should be good to go uh, so I like that but my one concern is how they use Lugo is he'll pitch seven innings even with a full bullpen so I looked at it and usually I guess to, to explain my thought process really quickly um, a guy for earned runs right like sure he goes and gets two earned runs early if their bullpen's fresh I'd usually think that's great which it would be the case here they can yank him early because they don't have to worry about the arms in the bullpen it's tough to take a hits or an earned run prop for a pitcher when the bullpen is tacked because they want to give that guy as many innings as possible. Lugo seems to be kind of an outlier there. Like, it doesn't necessarily matter if he's going to, uh, you know, have a fresh bullpen behind him or not. He's going to pitch deep in the game, so... Hopefully that's not the case because that's kind of the kiss of death, right? He pitches five good innings, gets to the sixth, kind of gets by with one run, and all of a sudden comes back out for the seventh or something and is tired and, and he's taxed. So that's the one issue here. But overall, I really don't mind this. You know, um, angels against left hand, uh, right-handed pitchers don't scare me all that much. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that they're absolutely terrible, uh, but I don't think that they're, you know, anything to be afraid of. He's going to throw fastball, sinker, slider, and change up. The only thing they're going to hit well is going to be that slider but um you know if if he has that if he has a slider working uh, I'm, I'm not too concerned about it because it's a good pitch so uh, again Seth Lugo under two and a half earned runs allowed you might see that as ERA on your books as well it's not earned run average but earned run allowed all right last and final player another player prop um, another plus money play, and this is probably going to be another half unit play, but Jose Urania under six and a half hits allowed. He's going up against the Rockies today, who four of the last five righties they've faced, they've had seven or more hits. They're due for some regression here. Um, they do have a decent average at home against righties. I think they're top 10 in the MLB, maybe top 12, um, but overall... You're looking at a guy that uh, is making his, what, second start this season, and seven hits is a hell of a lot. It just is uh, to go out there and ask for, especially when, um, you know, it's a team like the Rockies. Like, I don't sit there and shake in my boots over this Rockies team um, overall. The other thing that I would say, and again, it kind of hurts this play, but uh, I still, there's enough positive that outweighs the cons here, is that they're, they're um, from yesterday and then the day before, I believe, uh, Texas's bullpen did get some run. So just like this, they might try and stretch him out uh, longer than normal. But in his first start of the season, five innings pitched, four hits, one earned run. That was against Oakland, who, 
Yes, also not a very good offense. But again, we're not talking about going up against uh, you know a great team here. We're talking about going up against the Rockies, who uh, I think are due for some regression. Again, four of their last five righties have hit the uh, you know have not hit this, even including um, I think it was Ronald Blanco was actually the only one. But those pitchers were John Gray, Keaton Wynn, uh, Hicks, and Randy Vasquez. So it's like. Yeah, take it or leave it. Those guys, you could say that they, they, they should allow more hits than Uranium normally, but I can see the opposite argument as well. So I'm not going to use that. I just want to give let you guys know that I'm, I'm almost betting on in gambling, shout out to the Gambler Collection, on the regression offensively from the Rockies in this game, not necessarily uh, Irania. So uh, those are going to be the four slash five. I know I even missed, like, lost count there. But again, it's two picks for the first play. Uh, then we have a correlated one as the second play. And then play number three and play number four slash five uh, were player props there. But guys, hopefully you guys do enjoy the videos. Um, again, normal schedule programming will be coming up tomorrow. But uh, yeah, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Comment 10 if you made it this far. Because uh, it does mean, it, it sounds corny, means the world to me to know that even when we don't have our favorite setup or it looks like I'm in like a hostage situation, uh, some of you guys still rock with the video. So appreciate you. We'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace.